Ancient Rome. The state centered on the city of Rome is one of the most successful imperial powers in history. In the course of centuries, Rome grew in size, strength and importance from a small town on the Tiber River in central Italy into a vast empire. The history of Rome is an extraordinary story that spans thousands of years. Well, hello and namaste, and welcome to Itihas where we unfold the pages of history and unravel the interesting, surprising and sometimes weird facts about people and events in the past. Do subscribe to our channel and join us in this journey as we unravel the pages of history. Today we are here with 12 surprising facts about the Roman civilization, so stay tuned. Starting at number 1 we have the rumors of foundation of ancient Rome. Like all ancient societies, the Romans possessed a heroic foundation story. What made the Romans different, however, is that they created two distinct creation myths for themselves. In the first, it was claimed that they were descended from the royal Trojan refugee Aeneas, the son of the goddess Venus. In the second, however, it was stated that the city of Rome was founded by and ultimately named after Romulus, the son of a union between an earthly princess and the god Mars. Both myths helped establish the Romans as a divinely chosen people whose ancestry could be tracked back to Troy and the Hellenistic world. Rome was founded in 753 BC by its first king Romulus. Roman legend says that Romulus had a twin brother named Remus. As babies, they were abandoned in the area which later became Rome. A she-wolf founded and raised them, but when they grew up, Romulus fought and killed Remus and became the first ruler of Rome. It grew into a rich and powerful city during the next few hundred years. In number 2 we have the home to the longest war in history. The Roman Empire was the home to the longest conflict in human history, the Roman-Persian Wars. These wars went on for an estimated period of 721 years, and throughout the whole time the Roman Empire remained a solid frontier for most of the part. The Roman Republic and the Parthian Empire began waging war as early as 66 BC. These major scuffles would continue throughout the Roman and Sasanian Persian empires. Being at war for so long exhausted valuable resources and resulted in many casualties. Ultimately, the Roman-Persian wars faded out at the onset of the Arab-Muslim conquest around 628 AD. In number 3 we have the goddess of the sewers. Believe it or not, the ancient Romans had a goddess of the sewers and drains of Rome, Plocina, or the cleanser was believed to have proceeded over the Cloaca Maxima, the Great Drain, which was the main system of sewers in ancient Rome. Originally derived from Etruscan mythology, she was eventually adopted by the Romans and came to be identified with Venus. Over time, as well as being the goddess of sewers, Cloaca was also deemed the protector of sexual intercourses in marriages and the goddess of field and the goddess of purity. A shrine was built in her honor directly above the entrance of Cloaca Maxima Sewer and is where historians believe there was once a shrine. In number 4 we have, fathers could sell their kids into slavery. Ancient Roman dads definitely put their kids to work and that included selling them into slavery. The arrangement however was kind of like a lease since the buyer had to return the kid at a certain point. Fathers did this all the time apparently but there were limits. You could only lease off your kid as a slave up to three times. If you tried to do it more than that, you would be considered an unfit father and therefore your kid would earn emancipation from you. This is why it was helpful to have more than one kid, so you could lease off each one at least twice. In number 5 we have, there were sexual do's and don'ts. When considering sex in ancient Rome, the great French scholar Paul Wien said that the Romans were paralyzed by sexual inhibitions. While that might be going too far, there were strict limits to socially acceptable behavior. For example, after the wedding night, a modest Roman wife should not let her husband see her naked again. Consequently, it might be no surprise that the philosophers who argued that the man should not have sex with anyone but his wife 
not even with the slaves won few converts. It may appear that the folks of the Roman Empire hardly batted an eye towards same-sex marriage. Emperor Nero, who reigned for 13 years during the Roman Empire, married two men during his reign. During the Saturnalia, Nero married Pythagoras, a freedman under his rule. Nero acted as the wife in the ceremony during this marriage. Of course, Nero did marry some woman, but after horribly murdering one of them, he took a young boy named Sporus as his new wife. He even had Sporus castrated to make him more womanlike. In number 6 we have, Ancient Rome invented the shopping mall. It is believed that the world's first ever shopping mall was Trajan's Market. It is assumed that Trajan's Market was constructed between 100 and 110 AD by Apollodorus Damascus. Damascus was an architect and a close friend of Trajan, whom Trajan entrusted to construct the Forum. It is a large complex that was located on the Via Dia Forti Imperili, at the opposite end of Colosseum. The complex had a covered market, shops, and even a residential apartment block. As time went on, more levels were built adding more residential living stores and socializing establishments. Although it was once a bustling part of the city of Rome, it is now another large complex that lays in ruins. In number 7 we have, Emperors poisoned themselves every day. From the end of the 1st century AD, Roman emperors had adopted the daily habit of taking a small amount of every known poison in an attempt to gain immunity. The mixture was known as Mithridatium. Mithridatium, after the originator of the practice, Mithridates the Great, the king of Pontus. A drinking vessel made from the horn of a one-horned horse or donkey, believed by the Romans to have lived in India, was thought to be the antidote to fatal poisons. In number 8 we have, Romans believed that they had good reasons to persecute Christians. The Romans believed that their empire rested on Pax Durum. If the Romans did right by the pagan gods, those deities would do right by them. Christians, on the other hand, either claimed the pagan gods were evil demons or denied they existed at all. If the Romans allowed such atheists to propagate their beliefs, it was little wonder that the gods were angered and withheld their favor from Rome. Usually, Roman persecutors gave Christians every chance to acknowledge the traditional gods and thus avoided martyrdom. Of course, a committed Christian would not offer such false idols even a pinch of incense. In number 9 we have, Romans were amazing architects and engineers. The Romans didn't spend all their time fighting, they were amazing architects and engineers. They built roads and walls, things we now take for granted. The Romans built such a huge empire and conquered new lands thanks to their strong army. bring water to their cities, the clever Romans built aqueducts, a system of channels and bridges to transport water for public baths and toilets. One of the most famous buildings left by the ancient Romans is the Coliseum, a huge amphitheater in the center of Rome. This is where members of the public would come to watch sport events and games including battles between the Roman gladiators. In number 10 we have, gladiator fighting wasn't the predominant source of entertainment. When most people think of Roman entertainment, it usually involves gladiators in the Colosseum fighting to death for the pleasure of the Roman public. While gladiator fighting was a beloved sport by the Romans, it turns out it wasn't the most popular. The sheer brutality and the size of such games was astounding but not admired by all. Chariot racing was the most popular sport of this time. The Coliseum, where gladiators' fights occurred, could seat around 50,000 people, yet the Circus Maximus, which was the chariot racing, could seat an audience of up to 250,000. Gladiatorial games were organized by the elite throughout the Roman Empire in order to distract the population from the reality of daily life. Most gladiators were purchased from slave markets, being chosen for their strength, stamina, and good looks. Although taken from the lowest element of the society, the gladiator was a breed apart from the normal slave or prisoner of war. Being well-trained combatants whose one role in life was to fight and occasionally to kill for the amusement of the Roman mob.
In number 11, we have Gladiator blood was consumed and their sweat was the hottest beauty trend. Ancient Romans were known for doing some pretty questionable things in the name of health, whether it was brushing their teeth with urine or sharing wiping sponges in public bathrooms. Nothing was out of the question. However, during the 1st and 6th century, it was believed that the consumption of gladiators' blood or liver was successful in curing epilepsy. The belief was that the blood of a fallen gladiator could cleanse the soul and that's what people with epilepsy needed to cure the disease. It was not uncommon to see gladiator blood for sale while it was still warm not long after their death in the arena. Apparently, no ounce of human bodily fluids went to waste. The ancient Romans even harvested the sweat of gladiators. Outside of the arena, it was common to see people selling vials of gladiator sweat. Wealthy women would buy these vials and use it as a face cream. The sweat and dirt were scrapped off of the skin of famous gladiators using a tool called strigil. But not everyone could indulge in this product. These items were only reserved for women of status. Finally, in number 12, we have the fall of the empire. A whole variety of reasons could be suggested to explain the fall of the Roman Empire in the West. Disease, invasion, civil war, social unrest, inflation, economic collapse, in fact all were contributory factors. Although the key to the collapse of the Roman authority was the prolonged period of imperial infighting during the 3rd and the 4th century. Conflict between multiple emperors severely weakened the military, eroded the economy and put a huge strain upon local populations. When Germanic migrants arrived, many Western landowners threw their support behind the new barbarian elite rather than continuing to back the emperor. Reduced income from the provinces meant that Rome could no longer pay or feed its military and civil administration, making the imperial system of government redundant. The western half of the Roman Empire mutated into a variety of discrete kingdoms while the east, which largely avoided both the infighting and the barbarian migrants, survived until the 15th century. Well, this was all for 12 surprising facts about the Roman civilization and I hope you guys like this video. Do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you and have a great day.